chair feels funny. It's the same chair I always use. But it's not sitting right today. I was going to ask if everybody, because I see everybody's names, and I'm like, is everybody physically, if not emotionally, prepared? Is um, Steve back? I don't know. Is Steve back? He's still AFK in game, yeah. What about Steve? Are you back? Uh, I am just now. Are you physically, if not emotionally, prepared? Uh, you could say that. Is is like if everybody, is everybody is anybody smoking or uh, killing mm -hmm. their pets or something? No, <clears throat> we both here. Shall we I'm commence? Or shall we play a game? Mm. <laughs> How about tic tac toe? <laughs> that will be just as chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Can you hear me okay? Because yes. my voice is being a bit weird. Okay. Cool. I hear you quite nicely. Oh, I feel, thank you. I feel like you're louder than usual, which is really cool. Because you're usually oh. the softest voice on the recordings. Oh, okay. If we begin. Last session, the party had a weird combat encounter with a tribe of bullywugs. But you seem to impress their king, and you continued on to the lizardfolk outpost that is central to your diplomatic mission to um, discover what you're discovering their intentions toward the town of Saltmarsh. You entered the mound of earth that the lizard folk of the Bloodroot tribe are calling home through uh, the water side. It was the first entrance that you reached from the direction that you came. And you quickly encountered a set of guards who did not speak common, but they had really good dental care. <laughs> While Carathlana speaks Draconic, the spokes lizard for these guards, named Jonk, seemed to speak a really weird dialect that came off as nonsensical groups of words rather than the textbook conversational Draconic that Carathlana studied back in school in, I guess, the Elde Eldine Marches. It was like, what was it? Uh, gatekeeper school? <laughs> this is what I've, I've already forgotten. What is your deal? My deal. Um, yeah, I, I, I signed up with the gatekeepers and they put me on the other side of the continent. Yes, so that's what I thought. I was just having a bad time yeah. expressing it. Uh, yeah, you're on team gatekeepers. It could be because of my draconic accent. And, I mean, there's, there's, very, I mean, there's different styles of draconic. I mean, there's a very formal draconic, the ancient text, the ancient draconic text that can be found in the draconic prophecies. And that's the fancy pantsy style that is more like what you studied with the gatekeepers. And then there's like street draconic, which, you know, the everyday <laughs> draconic. And then there's, there's, you know, a whole spectrum in between. And then there's like whatever Jonk was speaking. He was just obviously down with the dragons in a way that I'm not. It's fine. So, so she was trained on Shakespearean English, and then was sent to 1970s D Jive Detroit. Yeah, <laughs> something like Pretty that. Pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's what it was. Um, however, fortunately, after name dropping Jaws Des bef before you got into any kind of fights, uh, it seemed to like calm the situation down, and Junk led you to a scale shield named Crackdust who does speak common, and they were far more comprehensible. You expressed your desire to parley with Queen Othakent, and Crackdess agreed to escort you, but also asked that you check your weapons first. Um, Steve did manage to successfully stick his short sword, which doubles as his um, uh, magical icon arcane focus, arcane focus. <laughs> he managed to s sneak that into a bag of holding that you acquired from the skeletal alchemist um and managed to pass it off of hey this is the egg bag this is the bag we've got all the sweet sweet chicken eggs in you should totally you know not be suspicious of this bag and then in exchange for your weapons other than the arcane focus one of the lizard folk gave you a coin that has a dragon on it and the word Kaifoth in Draconic script. 
once you handed over your weapons. Now, who has that coin? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think I do. I didn't physically give anybody a coin. I was thinking that um, based off the conversation, probably either Kareth Lana has it. Either Kareth Lana has it because she was mainly the uh, spokesperson. I don't know why I'm laughing about that, but okay. And <laughs> Or I mean, it, Shafira, who seems to somehow get her hands on most things that are coin-shaped. Given that Princess yep. Salty was our, our face person for that in, in exchange, I would imagine she would probably be the one who has it. Yeah, I probably, think I yeah. yeah, I've noted the conversation, but not who got it. So yeah, I'll have that. Okay. That's fine. So um, Princess Salt Saltwater has the coin in her pocket. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, Crocdust leads you away from the water slightly, and it start, decides to starts talking. He's they're like, "Well, I've given you my name." But who are all you? What are these formal introductions? What do you what do you have to do with Salt Marsh? What is your role there? Uh Are you professional diplomats? Diplomat cats? Alright, who's the best liar we've got? Yeah. I manage all the right. Well what's your name? What do I call you? Oh hi, I'm Steve. Steve, you with two eyes. Steve, I, I don't take this personally, but you kinda of don't look like a cat. Just blinks uh, for a, a few moments, like slowly, like trying to process how to to respond to that. You don't exactly look like one of them horny hornies, like your buddy here, either. And she and they point to Chimere. I'm just not as horny as he is. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. Thanks. Six minutes. We managed six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can't give me a prompt like oh, to dear. be taken. I'm going to step forward and, and bow and just say, hi, I'm Kymir. Well, howdy, Kymir. Pleased to meet you. And you. Uh, Crack Death notices. Uh, wait, uh, Carathon, are you wearing the Oceany Bits crown? Mm-hmm. Crack Death yeah. notices the crown and, and is like, that? That is a mighty fancy accessory. And Crack Desk waves their fans. I like accessories. It's, it looks good on you. Well, thank you. It's a... Duh. It's not an heirloom. It's like a cultural piece. Is that some kind of CL culture thing? I believe so, yes. I can't remember if I've introduced myself to her or not. Let's pretend you have. Well, good. <laughs> I will go with that. <laughs> but did you did you call yourself Kareth Lana or did you call yourself Princess Saltwater? I think there was some print mention of Princess Saltwater earlier. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm known as Princess Saltwater. Mama, I didn't know there was royalty in Saltmarsh. I would visit it. Oh, I, we should be pretty honored. It is kind of weird that y'all came in through the back door. You know, people aren't supposed to come in through the back door. It's kind of weird that you're here, you know, without an invitation either. But, ah, you seem nice enough and you know Giles Dance. I mean, for me, that's good enough. So, Crack Dust moves you a little bit farther away, starting to escort you, like, getting to the first real kind of tunnel split. When a lizard folk rushes down the tunnel from the west pulls them aside and talks to them in a hushed voice for a few moments. And you see Crack Dust agitatedly swish their fan while the other lizard folk talks. And then Crack Dust seems really kind of put out and worried about something. And then Crack Dust approaches your party again with an embarrassed expression and says, I do declare I, I have to step away for just a few minutes to take care of something before I dare take you to the queen. I beg your pardon. Now, if you wouldn't mind waiting in our holding area for just two shakes of a spear, I'll be back before you know it and we can mosey on to the drill room. And then Crack Dust's voice turns a little bit shouty and there's kind of like this moment of pause after they've delivered this information. And Carathlana hears them call Indraconic. 
and they yell, Hey, thug! Would you show our softy guest to the holding area for a minute? Do we get the sense that holding area is a jail, or it's just like a waiting room? Do an insight check. All of us, or just kind of, yeah? Um, they were, you've all heard of this mention of holding area area. Both Chimere and Carathlana. <laughs> what about Steve? Spotted a shiny. Oh, I'm, he's not participating. In Sephira is still obsessed about the fact that she didn't get the little coin thing, and she's like wondering if she can lift it out of Kareth Lana's pocket. <laughs> um, meanwhile, Chimere, Chimere is a little bit suspicious of the phrase holding area, and Kareth Lana is like uh, doubly suspicious in a sense because she doesn't trust the phrase in either common or draconic. Um, in that case, can can I turn to um, characters and say, is there anything we can help you with? Um, well, okay, I know this is awkward, all right, and I can tell that you guys feel a little bit weird about me asking you to kind of step aside for a minute and hold your horses, but honestly, the Colinth Co Coalition is leaving the complex right now and they're head this way and they are not psychologically prepared at this stage of the diplomatic dance to hokey pokey with the likes of a sea elf and correct us points at carathlana the colon have some kind of grudge i don't know what their problem is one look at, at you Car you see miss princess seawater and i'm afraid they're gonna go crazy and we don't want violence here now, if you could just hide off in this side room till the Coalinth have left the building, I would appreciate it ever so. I'm happy to disguise myself as a pot plant, if that would help. Crackdesk kind of like nods because they're in a rush now and they're like, they get shouty again. That Thug! These nice softies need escorting! And you see a ginormous lizard folk that's easily eight feet tall who can barely squeeze through the tunnels come shambling from the west and they herd you through a door to the south that opens to a long narrow room. Have you shared this map? Um... No, but I, I just opened the Lizard Folk 2 players. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Wow, I can share it again. Bugger. He is a big bugger. Uh, and no sooner than you file into this chamber, the door shuts behind you and you hear the telltale sound of a series of locks engaging. I don't like that. So... Confirming your suspicions about what holding area means, you feel like you're in a kind of prison-y space. There's a, a short flight of steep, rough steps leading to a narrow east-west passage that ends in a blank wall some 60 feet away. <sighs> kind of to your right, but like in front of Chimere and Carathana, you start to see that there are five iron-bound doors. All of them are closed. Um, and the doors have no exterior features except for there's a keyhole midway up on each door and there seems to be little sliding windows where one could open up um, a space that's at a height meant for eye level for a person of lizard folk height. So what you can tell is this is a prison area but you aren't actually in a cell itself, you're more like in the hallway adjacent to where all the cells are. Like the secure antechamber, if you will. Everybody roll perception. <laughs> Steven Shafir <laughs> on point. Yeah, just snoozing in corner. So just Shafir, this... Shafir, you're still obviously distracted. Maybe you're still <laughs> obsessing over that coin that's in Carathlana's pocket. Your hands are just going. Yeah. Just chanting, this is fine. This is totally fine. We're not going to die. This is completely fine. Steve is still laughing internally about his horny joke that he made earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, if we're in trouble, we'd be on the other side of the doors with the flippy holes in, so... Um, both Chimir and Carathlana, you feel like most of these cells, the cells in front of you, you don't hear any sound coming from them, but Carathlana, at the far end of the room, the very last cell, you hear a splashing sound, like that cell is occupied. Hmm. Should we go and have a look? Why not? We're already in here. We might as well. Uh, DM question. Yes. Are lizard folk classified as aberrations, beast, elementals, or monstrosities? Uh uh. No? Okay. I think they're considered humanoids for the purposes of uh, this campaign. Okay. Just checking. Not softy humanoids, but humanoids nonetheless. I think, you know, they might have like some giant lizard friends that are considered beasts. That was all. Just, just curious. Yeah, I'm like, I hear wheels spinning. <laughs> And, <laughs> and like, what is he thinking? And gears grinding, and there may be the smell of smoke. No, that's only if I was bory. <laughs> so you you hear a uh, sounds of splashing coming from the in cell. It's clearly a fish. It could be oceans. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> it's like well, dear if God, he followed us and got captured, then we can leave him there. I was about to say we can leave them and just say like, "Hey, here, here's, here's your appetizer." This could be why that they're so annoyed with sea elves. <laughs> do a um, do a history check. Ooh. Anybody, anybody who wants to contemplate that whole thing about sea elves. Ugh. Okay, so Steve. You know, because you're kind of smart sometimes, you know about the Colinth, and the Colinth are some kind of like sea hobgoblin guys. They're kind of jerks, but they seem to have this like long lasting enmity with elves in general. Um, as far as you know, like they never met an elf that they liked, and that's only been exacerbated by recent history because there was a discovery um, of a tribe called the Arenar that had the audacity, it was like this this kind of blasphemy to the Colinth that it was a tribe of elves and hobgoblin that had been living together for thousands of years and some of them had actually had offspring on offshoot of a new type of hobgoblin. And they've heard these rumors and so they're just doubly mad that all all elves just really need to jump off a pier. And that's where Rocky comes from. Well, yeah. You think he? You think Rocky in the past? I mean, you know that he's not like a hobgoblin. You, you're kind of like curious if he's one of those guys. Well, if I remember correctly, didn't he and I have a a little chat? Of he basically laid it out. Some serious down low subtext, hint hint, nudge nudge about having yeah, mean, it... marks that you don't want out in public, kind of thing, and how that yeah, was... times are hard. Yeah, it was basically a, a, a everything except explicitly saying it, but you know, basically, an almost he, he just didn't exactly say it, but was like, think. It's kind of like other people might not know, but you know, you can tell because you walked in those shoes. Right. So yeah. Steve, you you feel pretty confident that the whole th reason about Cowlinth uh, not wanting to see a seal, sea elf has nothing particularly maybe n to do with anything related to you guys. It's just a general, yeah, that's probably not a good situation wherever you are. They're just extra Haiti. Extra Haiti, extra jerky. So now at one point I saw Kareth Lana's little icon go up to the door. And now it's back. Boop. Yeah, we we decided there's Oceanus in there, and um, you can stay there. 
Okay, so you're not, you hear sounds coming from this cell, but you're not going to touch it with a 10 foot pole just in case it's Oceanus and you don't want to get into one of those conversations. Uh -huh. So while you're standing here in this kind of antechamber and it's a little bit moist in the room itself because you can hear that there's water in behind these iron doors, so it's raised the humidity. And of course, the place seems to be the mound that this colony is in seems to be carved out of the earth itself. So maybe some dampness there. What are you guys? What are you thinking about while you're just standing here waiting? What's on your minds? shinies <laughs> so if you want it that badly here <laughs> it's fine. no 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 i insist <laughs> steve is busy calculating uh multiple ways of climbing out of a cauldron filled with boiling water <laughs> excellent uh how do i play this game <laughs> it's uh Cam is just worrying about the fact that he's getting soggy. Yeah, you might get horn rot. Yeah, no, we don't want them dropping off, do we? Mm-mm. <laughs> Kareth Lana. Well, Kareth Lana is just really kind of occupied about not uh, avoiding oceanus. Pretty much. Um, oh, and it just reminded me of something. Everybody roll a uh, uh, charisma check. In the tower or not? Let's do this one in the tower. Towers are fun. Oh, is that, I have to move my map. Hang on. Okay. All right. I'm just making notes here. Oh, and I also just thought of something. More intellectual curiosity. I want to check something about Shafira. Because Shafira has a mark of, uh, of hospitality. And I feel like that gives you some kind of boon having to do with some kind of checks. Okay, whenever you make a charisma persuasion check or ability check involving brewer supplies or cooking utensils, you get extra dice. Okay. All right, I've reminded myself of how the world works. So a few minutes pass. The splashing seems to taunt Carathlana from the end of the hall. And you guys seem to kind of huddle closer to the locked door. <sighs> but after about 15 minutes, you hear a shriek beyond the locked door. And Carathlana hears a string of draconic epithets and some shouting, Thug, what do you mean you lock them in? Kythoth, take me away. I am ready for the egg in the sky. I cannot handle this level of aggression today. Get that door open. Get it open. And you hear the locks click, 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 unlock again, and the door slowly swings open, and there's Thug looking as small as a lizard folk giant lizard folk render can look and then he kind of backs away slowly and crack desk standing there tapping their foot hitting their palm with their fan looking quite put out about what has happened i'm so sorry about that i hope you guys don't feel like you're uh prisoners i mean i know that was very awkward and that you were kind of adjacent prisoner adjacent for a minute there but uh, I recognize that you are here for diplomatic reasons, and I hope you didn't take offense. Just out of interest, who do you have in there? Oh, a terrible fiendish creature. The most she murderous only... evil scum. Is his name Oceanus? I don't think so. Okay. Is she on the level, or is she making that up? Do you uh, uh, insight check? You totally think that they, I mean, she's speaking, she's saying what she thinks, or she, they're saying what they think. Mm -hmm. They think, she, she they think the creature in that kill. is a horrible, horrible monster, P piece of evil. It's not our imp, is it? The imp. No, the imp. I can't imagine the imp splashing. 
I mean, he, he can teleport so I wouldn't really like yeah poof back home as it soon wouldn't. as you as soon as you get out of that space out of that kind of waiting area by the prison cells uh thug closes the door behind you and locks it up again and uh kind of disappears back from whence he he uh lugged cracked ass kind of ushers you along to follow them and they start leading you through the camp you get to a place where the hall splits and there's a flight of terraced earth stairs to the north but crack dust leads you the opposite direction to the south past multiple chambers so where are we on the map oh there we go <laughs> Can we see into these chambers? Um, well, funny you should ask. Uh, there's a couple of them that have their doors open. Or they're kind of, they're closed off by just a curtain of woven out of swamp reeds. And you see those are filled with lizard folk soldiers. So kind of looks like maybe these are some barracks in the mm. doors you can see through. There's also a room with a wooden sign attached out outside the door. And the sign says, has the word on it in Draconic that Carathana reads as waste. Um, everybody do an insight or arcana check. So one would could say that this is a trash compactor on the detention level. Oh, Possibly. Yeah. Or it's the latrines. Also possible. Nope. <laughs> this is fine. No. <laughs> yeah. This is fine. This is fine. Yeah, everybody's like, okay, it's a hallway, except oh, for, different. well, everybody just thinks, eh, it's a hallway. Hallways are cool. They're nice. It's mud. Yeah. We're underground. That's cool. But you don't really notice anything else about this area that you are walking through. <clears throat> you reach another junction. To the east, you see what looks like another watery cave, reminiscent of the cave entrance by which you arrived. Is that the front door? Do you ask, uh, correct us that? Or are you just musing? He's just kind of musing it out loud, like, you know, okay, we came in the back door, so is that the front door? Crack desk says that's wrong. Oh, no, those are just the extra pop. That's the other entrance to, to the pools. No, the, the, the front door is, is to the very north of the camp. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's got an actual door. It's got an actual door. That's how you know it's a door. It's the front door because it's an actual door in the proper front of our camp. I'm sorry, we got lost. This is our first time. <laughs> he realizes how stupid that sense was. It's our first time here. Oh, yeah. We just introduced <laughs> Of course, it's our first time. Cracked us chuckles and says, oh, I... Don't worry, Bad. I'm a, I don't think anything of it. I mean, how would you know, really? You yeah, haven't been here before. But I don't know if the queen or the, the shamans or the minister are going to think the same way. Bring eggs with us. You're averaging all the eggs. We do. So you see Cracked Us duck into like a little room to the south. And uh, another lizard folk guard comes out and starts to walk with you. And you go up a short flight of stairs. Uh, going up these muddy stairs, you spot the first mechanical item you have seen since you entered the outpost. It's a iron hinged gate, but it's secured with heavy chains. And you see like there's like a lot of gears and it's a complicated locking mechanism. Um, that much more intricate than the straightforward iron doors that you saw in the prison. The lizard folk guard bustles past you, salutes Crocdust, and unlocks idea. this gate. Yeah. 
the gate is open for you, and Crack Dust shuffles you, uh, escorts you through the gate. And after you've passed through, you can hear it swing shut and relock behind you. I'm going to make a a wisdom save to see if Steve actively shrieks when that happens. Let's say no. <laughs> <laughs> he might. He might not. <laughs> Well, there's a, a definite start, but no, ah! or anything. You walk past, there's a little hallway on your on your left headed south, um, but you don't turn that way. You don't see what it leads to. You just see that the hallway goes on to kind of into uh, it and then turns a little bit. So you don't see what it leads to. And then you go another 20 feet or so to your west, and then there's a slight outlet to your right, like a hallette. And it ends in a wooden door. And Crackdess ushers you through this door. Crackdess motions for you guys to kind of wait uh, at the entrance of this room. You can tell it's some sort of drill hall. Crackdess approaches a couple of large lizard folk and is talking to them. And as you look around, you see this open area features six floor-to-ceiling pillars of shaped earth, and they demarcate a central area that is bare of furniture. In this central area, the earth floor has been packed closer than elsewhere, as if by the passage of many feet. There are several driftwood benches that stand near the north and south walls. A large mattress has been fixed to the center of the east wall, and attached to it is a large target dummy with the head of a fish-like creature atop it. There are several lizard folk that are practicing combat against one another or throwing javelins at the dummy. You see there are some lizard folk climbing on the ceiling, and they are practicing their spear throwing from that vantage point at the dummy as well. You see that Crackdess is talking to a powerfully built and tall lizard folk female who is standing with several of the heavily armed warriors. She observes the training through narrowed eyes. Another lizard folk stands near this leader dressed in a kelp colored robe and holding a long polished tooth. You also see kind of scurried in the corner, the, the southeast corner, watching all the goings on, but not out of earshot of uh, the woman who seems to be in charge. And they're kind of tittering amongst themselves. They're wearing robes, and they seem to have um, lots of feathers, feather necklaces, and one of them is wearing a medallion, looks to be of a bronze dragon. Crack Desk comes back to you, and says, the queen, Queen Earth King, will see you now. If you come with me. And Crack Death ushers you over to the tall lizard folk woman. She looks you up and down. And Crack Death makes the uh, introductions. Um, giving everyone's name, and he does refer to Gareth Lana as Princess Saltwater. Which gets a little raised eyebrow from the queen. Can I make a perception check? Yes. And also, uh, uh, Shafira, make an insight check. So, are there any drills present with a 15 on perception? What do you mean, are there any drills present? Because I'm trying to figure out why they're calling the drill hall when there's no actual drills. <laughs> you don't see any actual drills? You're not sure why they call it a drill hall? It might be a weird lizard folk thing, or they might just be jerks. Right, because there's lots of spears and javelins and shields and dummies, but there's no actual drills. Shafira, you notice that one of the lizard folk uh, practicing their spear throwing from the ceiling, 
you recognize them. They look distinctly like one of the lizard folk that you saw fleeing the scene of the exploded sea ghost. Okay. I let the rest of the party know that. It's a bit odd. Why is it odd? I mean, you didn't... Aren't they from the tribe? The queen kind of looks, has listened to Crack Des's, um introductions. Crack Des backs away, leaves the room. The queen is kind of raising her eyebrow at your whispering amongst yourselves. And then says, greetings, contingent from Saltmarsh. Crack Des tells me you've been name dropping. You claim to know the upstart Jaws Des. Is all this in common? Yes. Oh. Under normal circumstances, that would not recommend you, but these are trying times, so I will overlook that you entered through the back door uninvited to this diplomatic moot and indulge a conversation. What do you want? In my head, Ganon, right now at this point, everyone turns and looks at Karis Lana like, well. <laughs> <laughs> Then we all take a step back. Cheers. Thanks, Leave her at the front. <laughs> <laughs> like, everyone takes you're, a step you're back. Prince, you're Princess Saltwater. Everyone takes a step back, and there's Princess Saltwater just standing there going blink, blink, blink. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, I can I can try and diplome. I'm not sure you want me to, bearing in mind that the gatekeepers left me on the wrong side of the continent. But yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm out. <laughs> I don't I have a fucking clue. Oh uh, my god, she has the worst charisma by half. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm quite happy to do it. But she know. has a crown of Oshni bits. She does. She totally does. Oh my god. Okay. Um. It's we... you can give it a try if you want. She may not be the leader you need, but she's the leader oh, no, you no. deserve. No, 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 no. You guys will step back. <laughs> Just realize we will, and Steve have got the best charisma. We will we will assist her with with, with Vanna White posturing. <laughs> I can't honestly remember why we're here. <laughs> we are here because Salt Marsh are worried that the lizard I picture like everybody else kind of like sneaking up behind Carathlon and whispering at her to okay. try to like like tugging on her armor and being like tell tell her blah 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 tell her blah 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 and then like scurrying away again. Just like the little ball boys in a tennis match. Okay, um So Salt Marsh Council have asked us to come and have a have a chat with you. Um and we've bought you some eggs because we know that lizard folk like eggs. And uh, we're just seeing how we can improve relations between Salt Marsh and the lizard folk, because Salt Marsh is an outwardly looking society who uh, really want to get on with their neighbours. She studies you for a quiet moment and then says, Salt Marsh wants diplomatic ties, you say. I must confess my experiences involving Saltmarsh thus far do not inspire confidence. What I know of Saltmarsh is I contracted a purchase of much-needed weapons from smugglers operating out of Saltmarsh. My invoice made payment of dragon shards worth almost a hundred gold and received nothing. The ship they were on to receive the cargo exploded before we so much as saw the first spear. I'm out. Oh, no. I'm out a fortune for these trying times, and I still need to arm my soldiers. That experience does not leave me eager to engage in new contracts with the softies of Saltmarsh. You wouldn't happen to have anything to do with the exploding ship, would you? No. Well, well, Steve will pull out the basket of eggs, minus one given to Crack Death, and randomly go, wait, is that this dragon shard? And pull it out of the bag of holding, because I have a dragon shard. Let me see this dragon shard that you have. It just says dragon shard. That, uh, four pounds, that's all it says. It's not in Carathlana's handwriting, is it? There's no, um... <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> 
That would have like a backwards backwards R's in the word dragon shard. It's an egg, isn't it? <laughs> no, I need to look at your inventory, Steve. Okay, can you hear? Um, do you hand that over to her? Uh, well, I'm handing over the bag of eggs, just as a, you know, of course, the, you know, while uh, Carathlana, sorry, Princess Saltwater was was you know describing them, and uh, then when she mentions the dragon shard, just kind of be like, oh yeah, hold on, like. So the queen doesn't take the eggs from you. She kind of, like, that is not her job. And she kind of recoils from the eggs. And you see the, uh, looks to be like the sub chief standing next to her. And they kind of step forward and, and they take the basket of eggs for a second, look at it. And then they say in common, these need to go to the kitchen. <laughs> we are cooks. And they hand them back to you. Okay. She says, I appreciate, I appreciate the eggs, but I am not a egg juggler. I'm, I'm going to just sort of like whisper, do we want to give him some uh, made of gold? What is this dragon shard you mention? Can I have a look at it? Sure. I mean, it might be yours. <laughs> He'll just hand it out. You know, like, well, just hold it out, letting someone else do the, the transferring, you know, like like she's Tony Stark in Iron Man 2 or something. She looks at it and she says, uh, well, to be honest, this isn't the dragon shard I paid with. It's a different type. Oh, okay. She hands it back to you. Thought I'd give it a shot. But you had nothing to do with the exploding ship. I most certainly did not. Dead honest truth. At this point, she shouts out a name. Get it! And the lizard folk that Shafira recognized drops down from the ceiling, comes over, and then salutes. And the queen asks, Garut, do you recognize any of these softies from the sea ghost? And Garut studies each one of you carefully, then shakes his head negatively. And she thanks him. And dismisses him. Aren't you glad you went in disguise? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it seems you're honest about that much, and I will give you some credit. Seems Crack Dust feels you're harmless. So, I will treat you as if you are innocent of our issues with the smugglers. I'll take your request under consideration. May I ask why is Saltmarsh interested at dipl in diplomatic ties at this time? I find it interesting. We didn't send them an invitation to meet with us here because, frankly, other than not being entirely certain they could be trusted or that you're competent, I felt they would not be interested. Well, it's, it's more like we're just wanting to make sure, you know, like, you, sure, if y'all want to get, you know, get some arms and things, that's fine to defend yourself and all that. We're more sure you weren't planning on, like, trying to turn us into shish kebabs. I don't want to be dinner. Did you think we were going to attack Saltmarsh? We're just making sure that wasn't the case? No, it is not the case. You see, this, well, is, cool. this is not the Bloodroot tribe's true home. An army of vicious creatures called the Sawagan displaced the colony from its ancestral home some months ago. Our numbers were devastated, our hatchlings devoured. It was horrific. This is our makeshift camp while we muster the resources and numbers to purge those fish demons and grind them into the swampy muck like they deserve. 
That is why we are currently hosting several diplomatic contingents. DM question. Is Steve aware of the Sahuagin or uh, their history or the fact that they're evil, you know, Do a history check. Historize that. Oh, Ooh, snap. Nice. Oh, well done. Oh, yeah. You've run into Sahuagin before. In your time as a smuggler, more than once you have had to fight them off from um, raids on your smuggling ships. They oh, are dirty, dirty dudes. Oh, you, no, look, if you got problems with the Sahuagin, I got problems with the Sahuagin. You, you know how many barrels of rice they have made me lose in the last, like, 10 years? I'm totally done with killing them all. I, I see from the way that you speak, you're, you're very passionate about rice. Oh, yeah, rice is great. You, you think of rice as, as like, your children? Sort of. I mean, I never thought of it that way, but... Are you trying to say that you eat your own children, Steve? Well, when you put it that way... <laughs> I guess. Be warned. The Soagan enroach eastward. They have raided the Cowlanth, the Locantha, the Merfolk of this region, among others. It is only a matter of time before they strike against Salt Marsh or the halflings of Kurosawa, or the frivolous sea elves of Manon. And then she looks at Carathlana. You, you weren't from Manon, are you? Chip a wave. <laughs> what did you say? Chip a wave. Okay. <laughs> I, I, was, I was expecting a, their normal emissary. But if we fail in raising arms against the Soagan. They will be at your shores soon enough. Is there, there a normal emissary's name, Oceanus? I feel like I've heard that name before. Uh-oh. But he was the one who sent us here and reckoned that they were setting up trouble. Weren't they? I'm sure he was the one who said that the lizard folk were causing trouble and getting arms and... Well, it's a good thing you didn't send him then, isn't it? Do you have an alliance with the sea elves yourselves? I mean, one travels with you. Yeah, oh, I'm, cool. I'm accidental. Oh, yes. I get the impression <laughs> the softies have a lot of accidents. I wouldn't... Yeah, it's not my place to comment. <laughs> No, we have invited the CLs of Manon for a diplomatic meeting. Our past associations with them have not particularly been successful, perhaps because of different cultural worldviews. Well, so like, if you want the Sahuagin dead because they did a whole bunch of nasty stuff, and Sahuagin dead because of Sahuagin, like, that, that doesn't need any other really explanation. And they're trying to kill us, and I got some beef with them anyway. So, uh, you know, maybe we kind of help each other out? The queen looks thoughtful. Jonk, your old weird friend, the, the first lizard folk that you talk to, runs into the room while the queen is seems to be thinking about your quest and announces... Hark, she who sits upon the alligator's face. The hive gives no honey but stings. Legs hop up onto the lily pad, but do not want fish for dinner. And this is in Draconic again, so you guys don't know what they're saying, but that's what Gareth Lana hears. And Otha Kent looks at her advisors. And she says, does anybody know what he's on about? Anybody? And then she looks at the party. Do you know what he's talking about? Oh, you mean so they think he sounds nuts as well? <laughs> Do you guys say anything? At this point, just looking at Kareth Lana, like, I don't know what she's saying. I shrug. I, I don't speak draconic. I, I, uh, yeah, I will run a um, brief pricey of what he said. Well, yeah, that's that's what I heard, too. I don't know what he's talking about. 
And then the sub chief next to her clears his throat and he says, Perhaps he speaks of the Bullywug, Your Highness. A retinue is expected for the moot. And oh, you see Otha can face palm. And she mutters, Ugh, I invited them. I must have been drunk. Dear Kryfoth, the bloody Bullwig. And then to the party, she says, Have you, have you met the Bullywug? They gave us kazoos after trying to kill us. <laughs> They are ridiculous. Well, Jonk, what did the Bullywug have to say? And stop trying to speak in metaphor. Nobody likes it. It just makes people want to stab you repeatedly. And you see Jonk kind of blink, and he looks abashed. And now, Carathlana, you hear him say in very clear draconic, Oh, my bad. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The Bullywugs are really confusing, and they won't stop playing their kazoos, which is really pissing off the merfolk. And they didn't really seem into raising arms against the Sawagan until I called it a war party. They like the sound of that emphasis on the party. They're very keen to prove themselves as superior warriors and to take every test of their martial prowess. They seem to yeah into the spectacle yes very much so well you better fetch them here jonk i'll see what i can do to make a multi-pronged military operation to preserve the freedoms of five cultural heritages so they aren't fed to the shark sound like it's tons of fun and you you hear a titter and you notice there's the priests that are standing off the side have been listening to all this and carathon you hear them exclaim little things like the indignity and this alliance is doomed and somebody says softies are for eating and somebody else says i've heard they their kind sleep with chickens and then someone else exclaiming kaifoth save us um my shoes are really interesting my shoes are the most interesting thing i've ever seen i like my shoes the shamans really don't really disapprove of everything And Otha Kent finally says to you, look, I haven't decided what I think about you yet. And by association, any partnership with your town of Saltmarsh. I must consult my minister, Sorif. He tends to like diplomatic ties with the outside world, hence my other guests. That said, the colony does not have an accepting disposition towards softies. This is fed by their own unworldliness and the propaganda of the shamans. The shamans are insular grouches, and they love spreading rumors that softies are warmongering thieves who sell their own kind into slavery. I will take a night to think on the matter, then give you my decision. In the meantime, you will be granted the full privileges of a guest. I will trust you that much. Don't disappoint me. Nope, nope, definitely not. Her sub-chief produces a set of badges. Which I put into your party inventory. Speaking of the, the, the party inventory, we are uh, seem to have forgotten if there was one kazoo given to Kareth Lana or if we all got one. There was one kazoo. Okay. Yeah, I think it was like the king giving her a personal, uh, personal kazoo to Princess Saltwater. And at last, one last thing that Otha Kent says is, she offers a suggestion. Use this time to make nice with the inhabitants of the colony. Even if I want to decide in your favor, I must balance that desire against the desires of my subjects. Get them to like you. It paves the way for diplomacy. If they decide you're a lot of brutes like they did with the Cowlinth, it makes everything that much more impossible. Feel free to wander and prove your honor and trustworthiness. And you are effectively dismissed. 
so the end do result. How... Uh huh. Sorry. Do we know how lizard folk feel about alcohol? Uh, you know that uh, Jaws Dust wasn't much of a drinker. Hmm. But you really liked eggs. I'm sorry, Otherwise... he wasn't particularly. Um... <laughs> you can make a nature check, or you can make a nature check if you want to see if anybody has any insight about what the average lizard folk is like. <laughs> so, Steve and Shafira feel pretty confident that everybody drinks. Shafira was, al was always confident about that. You know, you'll find some outliers, people who are teetotalers and just poo-poo the whole idea of getting drunk. Yeah. <laughs> but, but by and large, most people don't turn down a nice drink. Now, at this yeah. point, I'm going to shift you over to a different map. I'm going to use the, uh, the DM map rather than the player's map for this, specifically because you now have kind of open access, pretty much, to the colony's camp for overnight until the queen speaks to you again and you have uh, a certain amount of time for this evening you can uh, interact with the people in the camp and try to raise your favor right now uh, <clears throat> you have a slightly like just a barely positive reputation with the lizard folk, specifically li lizard folk that you've interacted with thus far. Meaning the queen doesn't want you put to death. And crack deaths and jonks seem to think that, you know, you're not terrible. The downside to this map is that it's much, much larger. I'm hopefully not too large. I'm hoping that, uh, it's just going to be big and not like large and file size. But I'm using it because the rooms are actually numbered and I think it'll make it easier for you guys to reference where you want to go rather than just like blindly kind of be like, this is where I am without any uh, easy point of reference. So, so my first goal is to get so we can drop these eggs off and see if we can get some some you know, start our feet off with some major food points. Yeah, we've got six casks of brandy as well. I've got three bottles of wine as well. And a dark chocolate cake, apparently. What? And Although I'm not sure how long that's been there. When did you get that? <laughs> No From Chef Perkins, <laughs> it's moldy now. Is it? Oh. By this point, it's that 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 baby's old because Chef Perkins baked that for you over two weeks ago. What? Oh. See, this is why you store things in the bag of holding where it's you know temporarily seized up and it doesn't mm. get funky. Well, if like, we go past that room with the trash sign on it, we can chuck it in there. Yeah, clean out your inventory. It's time to reincarnate. Oh, don't. <laughs> My inventory's so full of stuff that's not a character, it's untrue. All right. I have shared a new mappage. Bloody hell. This is, this is the whole thing. Uh, your normal player with maps had it divided into two large, and it didn't have any kind of like room numbering. Uh, aren't we supposed to be on 40? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you are. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to turn on labels for a couple places that you pass where you have an idea of what they are already. The fact that the, the, the jail cells are labeled backwards is really making my CDO t twitch. I know, right? I'm not. I'm trying to figure if it's like that in uh, in the book itself. I haven't checked because I feel like that's not right. 
Like, why is everything else like in, in an organized pattern and then backwards? Like, ah! No, it's like that in the book, too. I don't know why. Because you put the most dangerous one in the one furthest away from you. But they would always be the first one on the list that you check to make sure they're still there. Does that make sense? Maybe so. Right, so heading to the kitchen to try and score seven? some food points. All right. So I've labeled, I think, all the places you've actually been. Oh, I didn't label where you entered, but you can tell the water. That 49 is where you came in. Okay, kitchen then. Oh, we didn't miss the front door by that much then. Yeah, you just, you just, <laughs> you saw like the cave and you're like, hey, let's go to that cave with the water. The thing is, this word comes, gets around that you like came in through the back door in the cave. Uh, initial reactions to people is that that's kind of like gauche and tacky. And it doesn't exactly help your, your standing. It was, but we were trying to get away from the bully works as well. You should always gain consent before penetrating the rear end. <laughs> Dear. <laughs> so, um, give me a number. Where are you guys going? Seven. At least that's my guess. Who knows if it's what? Right. Can we ask? And we can peek, peek in the rooms on the way past. Yeah, uh, uh, well, You're going to peek in the, in the rooms on the way past? You can mm -hmm. ask, totally. Oh, we've got free reign, so, yeah. If you ask, uh, whoever, who, who wants to ask and roll a persuasion check? Uh, I, I don't mind asking. Hmm. Okay, they tell you it's, it's west. If you just, like, kind of head to the west and curve around the hall a little bit to the north, wow. Oops, you'll get to it. Yes. So you head down the hallway, and if you peek in the rooms on your way, uh, number 10, you peek in, and it looks to be a banquet hall. And there's a couple, there's, you see some people setting a, a large uh, driftwood table in there. Um, you pass 11, and there's big double doors. This, these, these doors are the, show the most detail and craftsmanship of anything you have that, seen. That's the throne room. Yeah. So it's pretty obvious it's the throne room. The doors have very large bronze dragons etched in relief on the wood. And is this the, is this like their deity? Do we know? Well, one of the priests had a medallion with a bronze dragon on it. Yeah, exactly. You peek in the doors there, and the throne room looks empty, except for their two little hatchling kids playing. Rolling a ball between each other. So how much do we know about the, the dragon hierarchy? What do you mean? Well, okay, putting this out of character because it'll be faster to explain uh, uh with metagaming uh you know each of the, the, the like the chromatics are evil the metallics are good etc etc actually have experience to know that a bronze dragon whether it would be a good or an evil being well there's two different aspects i think to this concept being an eberron so roll a Roll a history or arcana and a religion. And religion. <laughs> Sometimes I really feel bad for Carathlana. <laughs> Why is religion an int skill? <laughs> that I that goes the religion to me. Religion. I've I've said that for years. Like why why is that intelligence? That doesn't make any sense. Um. Yeah, that doesn't make sense either. That should totally be wisdom. Intelligence perfectly on that religion. Nope. That needs to be wisdom. 
Because it's like just setting up clerics for like not knowing jack about their job. Well, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, history-wise, we're in Eberron. So, you know that there is a whole kingdom of, uh, or at least Chimere knows. Chimere definitely knows because of his monastery background and what the Way of the Broken Code is on about. You know that there is a whole kingdom called Arganesson where the dragons live. And you know that there are all kinds. Uh, that in this place, dragons are not necessarily good or evil based off the color of their scales. Uh, it's more just their lifestyle choices and their priorities. So in, at least in Eberron, there wouldn't be a... A, a dragon would not be evil guess. just because they're white or just because they are red. And they're not going to be good necessarily just because they are metallic. I feel like there was something else I was going to say. Um, anything religion-wise, you guys really don't have a lot of insight. I mean, you, I mean, Stephen Carathlana, you do know that there are some religions that are that revolve around dragon worship, but you only hear about the bad ones. Like that Tiamat person. And Chimera also knows, because of the way of the Broken Code, that the dragons, uh, a big part of their, of their culture is the Draconic Prophecies and interpreting uh, what is basically a Nostradamus book for the future of Eberron. How old do we think this complex is? Everything looks pretty fresh to you. When you were talking to the Queen, she said that they've only been here for a few months. That they were basically so, had to flee their ancestral colony home place because of Sawagan invasion. So they've dug all this out. Yes. In the last few months. And if you think and about if you think about your uh, what you remember about Jaws Des, he was he did have a few skills with shaping earth. And, and using water to manipulate the land. Um, you saw him like use a couple of those things before he wandered off. So you can extrapolate that maybe there are other lizard folk here that know how to do that and that's how they, they built this place. I mean, if they got some priests with move earth, they could have done this in a couple of days. Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. So, you head to room 7, which is kind of what they the direction sounded like you were going to, where you should go. And when you peek in the door, you uh, see that it does appear to be a kitchen. I was so waiting for her to say you were shot in the face. <laughs> Like, that's what you get for an educated guess. So, is there anyone in here? Yes. Okay, As you get of... close to that do to the door, you detect a smell in the air, and it reminds you of cooking meat, but it kind of has an acrid tang to it. That smells like kimchi. Warm air wafts gently through the doorway. At one end of the room is a large fire pit in which a bed of coals is burning. Over it are multiple half-cooked, skinned animal carcasses impaled on spits that are being turned slowly by four unarmed lizard folk. A fifth worker seems to be bossing them all around, and that one is basting the carcasses with liquid spooned from a wooden bucket. In the center of the room is a long wooden table cluttered with an assortment of knives, raw meat, and splinters of bone. On the floor beneath the table are some uncured hides. Beside the table are two large wooden buckets. Against the south wall rests a large wooden cabinet. Its shelves are piled high with clay pots, bowls, basins, and drinking mugs. And against the west wall stand some large wooden barrels. Um, against the east wall is an open wooden cask containing a white 
crystalline substance, and three wooden buckets. A large iron cauldron, currently empty, hangs from the ceiling suspended over the fire pit. I'll share a little image. Ooh, we got pictures? It's a picture! You're in the kitchen now. Ooh, and they got garlic. I noticed the important things. Not weapons. Nope, garlic. Well, they're obviously good people then if they've got garlic. They're at least not vampires. True. They're cooking, they're cooking. You hear them talk to each other in, in Draconic and Carathon. You can tell they're just... Uh, the the one who's doing the basing does seem to be in charge and, and they're giving orders to the others to do kitcheny tasks. Kind of hold the egg basket up and kind of give Carathlana a nudge, like, let them know we brought eggs. The, the one in charge stops their basting. And they look at your, they look at your, um, oh, I'm assuming that you actually put the guard, the um, guest badges on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely stuck it on the armor like we're supposed to. And Carathana can tell that it, they say in Draconic, hello, my name is. And I do, I resisted the temptation to put Slim Shady on. So they see that you have guest, official guest badges on. So while... At the first glance, they kind of recoil and look a little bit frightened at your sudden presence in the kitchen. Seeing the guest badges make them relax. And the one in charge looks curiously at the basket that Carathlana is, is waving at them. And takes it gladly and says, thank you. Are you, you are guests, obviously. Are you helpful? It's very helpful of you to bring these eggs. Are we going to give them the brandy too? You know what would be really helpful? We don't have anyone to cook them. Could you cook the eggs for us? Um? Leave a couple mm -hmm. dozen raw for the people who like raw eggs. <laughs> well, she does have the Mac of hospitality. I was going to say, I don't have... Uh, yeah, I don't have Cook's Tools proficiency either. Uh, yeah, Shafiri is the one with Cook's, cook's Tools proficiency. Cook eggs, yeah. Do we ask him if we've got a preference on how the one I'm cooking? Just just a good, like, soft boil and maybe some fried and maybe some scrambled, you know, all kinds. And you want to do it now? Oh, yes, for supper, for dinner. We're okay. preparing the banquet. If you need any help, you can just ask me. I am Chef Gherkins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll crack on and... Uh, oh, I'll crack on. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. And get on with cooking eggs. Oh, so we also point out for anyone who, who didn't already know. Uh, speaking of Chef Gherkins, happy birthday, per the, C Chef Perkins. <laughs> Chef Perkins. It's his birthday. He's 13 today. Aww. Oh, and we have some tasty bacon that we can give for them for the, the, the banquet, too. You want to give them tasty what? bacon? How's that? No. Hostel? So I was like, hold on, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> She's okay with the brandy and the eggs. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on with the bacon. Hold Let's on. not get crazy. I know. I'll, I'll contribute a bottle of wine. I'm sure that'll go nice with eggs. 
So Chef Gherkins is by the fire pit. You, you've handed over these eggs and Chef Gherkins has kind of asked you for assistance and instructions. And Shafir has volunteered to prepare these eggs. You've, you've also given, what, you gave wine. Did you give brandy as well? Yeah, I think we should. Okay, so the chef is very excited and you see that there's some flambe things happening with the rotisserie meat now. And there's a lot of clapping and, and smiling amongst the other commoners. Um, so Shafira is going to be cooking for the next hour or so. Do the rest of you want to explore somewhere else and, and leave Shafira to, to her cookery? Well, I will also, um, uh, uh, since I don't know if they have it or not, they're, they're, they're not really, for, they haven't in, in, encountered the joys of Salt Marsh's cuisine. So I made my bottle of spicy syrup proudly made in salt marsh uh, for them to explore with their, their culinary concoctions. Chef Gherkins, their, their eyes kind of get really wide as you hand over the spicy syrup and they kind of have that uh, really wide, uh, overly large toothy smile that you see when, when you're trying to be like humoring somebody but you really don't know what the hell it is that you just were handed. <laughs> he's it. he's like just it. nodding and you're saying spicy syrup and he's mimicking spicy oh. syrup. All right, we need a translator. Um, here's Lana. Steve, I'm speaking gobbledygook to them. As you look around this kitchen, you note a distinct lack of rice. Have brought some. I, I can translate that, yeah, that they should because. So, once Carathlon explains, Chef Gherkins is like, oh, and more basting happens. So, it's almost like one of the one of the pieces of meat that they have on the rotisserie is now like a glazed ham. Yeah. Spicy ham. I shall now delete that from my inventory as it was donated. And the basket of eggs. This is like the third time I've read what your skills are, Shafira. Oh, Shafira's gone for beer. That's okay. It's not I'll perception. <laughs> I'll have her roll when she gets back. Um, so what else are you guys doing? Uh, Shafira is cooking, so she's going to stay in this room. But you guys can wander somewhere else. That was um, my... Go ahead. Cam is kind of curious about the dragon, um, so he's he's gonna. If you guys are all right, I'm just gonna wander off and try and find like a priest or talk some. Uh, that means he needs to talk common. Never mind. No, we do have an elf that can translate for us. Yeah, but Tiffmana might want to go do her own thing. So I'm happy to bimble along with you. That's fine. Sure. Yeah, my translation skills are great. <laughs> well, it would appear they are, you know. If you ask, uh, if you ask where the temple is, they'll say it's to the south. Twelve. Yes. Okay. Then, um, yeah, I guess wander down that way then. So if the, the if the rest of you, uh. The rest of you head south and leave Shafira to her cookery. And if you peek indoors as you go, like you know, you've done before, you see that the room adjacent to, uh, there's, a, there's a door inside the kitchen. And if you peek through it, you see that there's more stores of, of food, bags and barrels of different goods, some carcasses. Um, and you see there's a door outside uh, leading to it from the main hallway. So that's room eight. And then you head south, and you don't pass any more doors. You do see there's like a little uh, hallway outlet. But if you keep curving around, you get to number 12. And you enter a temple. Sweet perfume hangs in the air of this place of worship. 
At the far end, a lizard folk crouches before a stone altar. To each side of the altar are small lit burners, while at its center, a candelabrum holds four lit candles. Above the altar, the south wall is decorated with a marine fresco of lizard folk warriors brandishing clubs, fighting alongside a bronze dragon. Blue and green drapes cover the east and west walls. Um, and it's just the one, the one lizard folk in here. Yeah, there's a shaman from the altar. Um, I'm going. To, oh, I don't want to disturb him if he's praying. Well, I guess I'll just sort of like. Wandered down, so I'm close to him in the hope that he knows that I'm there, but not actually go up and say hey. He quickly notices you've entered, and he looks somewhat affronted by your presence um, in the sacred space. Okay, I'm going to bow respectfully. Um... And he and... notices your, your guest badges, and he starts off speaking in Draconic. He says, I see they'll let anyone into the colony these days. Show respect to Kai Forth. Um, I'll okay. translate that. <laughs> just, I'm just going to say, uh, Kerry Flada, would you mind just repeating, telling him what I'm going to say? Let's see if we can get some information. Yeah, no worries. All right, so I'm just going to say on the assumption that Kerry Flan is going to just like do the whole talking along at the same time, like you see on telly. Um, what time of day is it? It's close to supper time, close to tea okay. time. Uh, so I'll say good evening, Holy One. I did not mean to disturb you, but um, as you can see, I am a visitor and I'm very interested in in your your religion the 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 dragon motifs that we've seen around your settlement are very intriguing and i wondered if if you would share your um wisdom about your your religious history Con after, when carathlana translate this you see the shaman look a bit gleeful and rub his hands together and you hear him start to speak in broken common, perhaps a bit grudgingly, but he says, you're interested in conversion, eh? Um, <laughs> um I want to say, well, I'm, I'm definitely interested in hearing more about um, your religion and your beliefs and, and, and then we'll see where we go. Well, the world was created by dragons, you know. I'm going to guess I knew that and say yes. Lizard folk were descended from dragons, you know. Um, I'm going to smile and nod. There are the forces of evil in this world. The dragon below. Kyber, it is called. There are the dragons that ascended, the dragon of the sky. Sybaris, it is called. And then there is the dragon between, this world that we live on. Eberon, it is called. In the children of Eberon, there are many dragons descended from Eberon, come from Argonessen. Kaifoth is one of these great, beautiful children of Eberon. Kaifoth is a dragon between. Okay, so Kaifoth is for the, for the, for the lizard folk. She is our patron and guardian. 
she has granted us gifts and boons and knowledge. She blesses each queen and she makes us strong. That is why we are the Bloodroot tribe. Because, um, because you're descended from her in some way? No, no. She gives us, she's, she's the creator of the Bloodroot tree. And it is her gift to us. Yeah, we, we, drink, we drink of the sap and it makes our warriors mighty. So is Kaifoth, like, no, I, I'm sorry, I'm using Steve's voice, but is Kaifoth, like, parallel to Eberron? Do an insight check. All right, is Steve. Everyone or? Uh, yeah, a, an 18 is good enough. So, you know, this whole cosmology, I mean, now that he's talking about it, you know, the, the stories they talk about the creation of the world. And that sounds like the whole Kyber, Eberron, Sybaris rigmarole that he's going through sounds like your basic creation myth. From, from your point of view, Steve, you're like, yeah, Eberron, all well and good, the dragon between. But, you know, there are real dragons and real dragons are different than these metaphysical dragons. And you feel pretty sure that he's talking about a real dragon and that they are kind of, you think that they are mixing the idea of the cosmology and creation of the world with an actual dragon, like straight out of Argonesson. Uh, so ultra powerful dragon kind of led them to believe that Kaifoth replaced Eberron in the creation myth. Sort of. No, I mean, he's just said so far that there's this dragon named Kaifoth that has helped out the tribe in the past, and they have taken to worshiping, worshiping the dragon as a consequence. Okay, okay. So so the, the tribe put the, the deity status on the Kaifoth, not the other way around. Hmm. That's the vibe you're getting. Okay. Quietly in the back of the room, not saying anything. Uh, this... The shaman proceeds to tell you that he he talks about you know the power of the blood root sap and how rituals using it make their warriors strong, makes them invincible, and he proceeds to tell you that any alliance, any alliance that the queen makes with softies or sharks or others is going to be doomed without the ritual. She says she sent warriors to fetch the sap so that we can create the drink for our warriors to bless this strategic movement. <laughs> I can't come up with words right now. But she's taking so long. I don't think she recognizes the importance of it. Oh dear God in Discord. <laughs> should I look at Discord? Yes. You probably should. I'm so creeped out. Okay. I have so much backlog of stuff right now. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that is very inappropriate. Bang on. Oh, that poor oh. car. Hey, it is in a no parking zone. I think that's a you go. It no go now. It's a no go now. <laughs> I'm probably sure it will never go again. No va. The shaman talks up th their their religion and how wonderful Kaifoth is for like a good half hour. Okay. Everybody uh, who's in the room talking to them roll a persuasion check. And Shafira, if you're back, you can roll a persuasion check and add the d4 for your mark of hospitality. Ooh, come here, keeping us alive. Oh, okay, no. That good monk training. How does she add the d4? She just rolls an extra d4 after she rolls the thing and then All adds right. the number. So, here's the situation. 
Burnt the eggs. After you're talking. Over the long conversation, the shaman has built a rapport up with Chimere. And, you know, by the time that you're done talking, the shaman is like patting Chimere's hand like he's he's a good boy. He likes Chimere. Chimere understands. He's a good horny boy. He is obviously, he obviously respects religion and has good values. And Chimir being so respectful raises the estimation that the shaman holds Steve and Carathlana just by association. Because if it had been up to you two alone, he would like wash his hands of softies and be like, burn them all, let's have them for dinner. But Chimir isn't a heathen, and he will keep that in mind in terms of what he, ta- what he tells the other shamans about whether or not uh, the people of Saltmarsh are worth haggling with, worth building di- diplomatic ties with. Meanwhile, Shafir is working up in the kitchen. And this, this fire pit is not like what she's used to. It's not like what she grew up with on the farm outside of Gatherhold. And so she's trying to kind of, to cook the eggs five different ways. But because she's not really accustomed to to gauging the temperature and how exactly this particular thickness of cast iron kettle cooks, um, she's not used to these pans. She gets distracted with like how she thinks they're a bit dirty and so she takes a bit long trying to clean them up and then Chef Gherkins notices and gets a little bit insulted like at the insinuation that their pans are dirty. And the only eggs that really turn out super edible are the raw ones and the scrambled. So while the the chef is appreciates the effort he's not really impressed and comes away with the conclusion that softies need a lot of help in the in the uh, cuisine department but at least it wasn't a negative right not a negative so that's the thing I can just make them uh, egg mayonnaise sandwiches out of the hard-boiled eggs. It's fine. Oh, you see, I see how it is. Going with the tasty bacon was too far, but you can make the egg sandwiches, and and those are okay. (laughs) I just didn't want to give up my bacon. Actually, I have to say, on a personal note, she does make the best egg mayonnaise sandwiches. Eggs, I'm so grossed out. Eggs, <laughs> eggs. All right, where else would you like to go? Is there anywhere else you would like to go? I'll uh, next next decision. Someone else. Am I still in the kitchen? Uh, you're finishing up in the kitchen. Are you guys kind of let's say you reconvene in the hallway once you're done. Oh my god. Is there stuff in Discord again? Yeah, there might be. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Ah! That's even worse than the one that I put. I mean, Kenneth Lannis is bad enough. It looks like shagging the hot egg, but. Terrible Easter Bunny things. It's an Easter bunny laying a chocolate egg. Oh, horrible. I need to close. I need to. I'm never going to eat an Easter egg again. This is why you aren't more popular with the lizard folk right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, it, someone said it's as bad as the dragon. No, the difference is the, the, the dragon's still there. <laughs> chocolate egg got deleted. <laughs> So give me give me another one place, or if you want to split up two places you want to visit before uh, night falls. 
I'm um, 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 looking through the map. Well, I guess since we're trying to build up some kind of rapport with the lizard folk, um, can we able to um, maybe think about going off and find some soldiers to spar with? I was going to say go over to the, the banquet hall and see if we can help them set up for the banquet and stuff. That works. You'll yeah. automatically have dinner with them. But yeah, if you go into the banquet hall, and you can also go back to the drill room and drill for a while with the soldiers. But there's no drills. You can go in that room and look for drills. So if you want to split up, um, the banquet hall, if you recall, is room 10. And the, the drill is 40, yeah. Yeah, all right, I'll, I'll go there. And Carathlonis is room 26. He's going to go find secret rooms. And... Oh, uh, I see. That is the one room that you can't access. <laughs> yeah, there's no passage to it. Yeah, there's no, like, clear way to that. Well, I mean, on the, the path to it, the DM, it's, the path to it in there. is the one. Yeah, it's because it's like the DM map, and I couldn't. Yeah. I, it was like a compromise having stuff like that visible. But there's a gate, and one of the few locked gates that there is, it's like behind one of the areas that you cannot actually reach, just wandering freely through the complex. Yeah, they don't let us into the secret treasure vault with stickers. Those little dot dot dots before you get to that area is a is another iron gate. <laughs> it is the most curious room on the map, though. So so good identification skills. So in the banquet hall, uh, you see there are five unarmed lizard folk preparing the area for a feast, and they're setting the table with wood and stone utensils. There are several long, again, driftwood wooden tables placed end to end in the center of the hall with wooden benches running alongside. At the south end of the tables is a large wooden chair. You think that's perhaps for the queen. And then four slightly smaller chairs flanking it. Placed on the table are earthenware pots, jars, plates, and cups, five drinking mugs, and woven baskets. And against the east and west walls are tall wooden cupboards. Um, once you enter that room, uh, if you express an interest in helping them, you can assist them in laying the table. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Just make, make it a point to be on the side opposite the queen's chair so there's no like funny business going on okay uh let's see do <laughs> try to think what this is really actually what kind of check is this i want you to make number one just a persuasion check to see how you get along with them in general like gangbusters so you perfectly get a, a, along well with them. Now make insight checks as well to see how well you actually copy doing what they're doing. Terribly. So, <laughs> Steve, 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 you're really excelling in the whole personality bit, you know, especially considering you don't speak the language. So you've got this really good charades kind of hand signaling thing going on with the lizard folk commoners there and as you're setting the table you're just completely getting it wrong you're putting the forks on the wrong side you're putting like the knives in the cups and it's just a mess but Carathlana is cleaning up behind you and, and straightening up everything so that it looks right so while you're like totally scoring personality wise she's totally scoring with the getting the job done sounds about right Chimere, you go into the drill hall and you ask if you can uh, exercise and, and do some uh, combat maneuvers with the soldiers there. Mm -hmm. And they happily engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So uh, do a, let's see, do an athletics check and a persuasion check.
that could have been worse. So you totally, you totally build up that kind of martial arts aficionado uh, appreciation with the other soldiers that you are training with. And you all kind of like appreciate that you guys are practicing your craft and that you have skills and you know how to use them. And while you don't seem, you fumble a little bit sometimes in your maneuvers, like you, you sometimes trip up when you're trying to flip somebody and you sometimes your fist miss, you know, like you might uh, miss with your main hand, but you hit them with your off hand or you might miss a block or, from time to time. Um, so while there seems to be a few fighters there who are really having a better day than you, you don't embarrass yourselves. So they definitely respect what you're trying to do there. And you come away from your encounter with the other soldiers in the drill room uh, with an overall positive vibe. Cool. Yay, positivity. All right, it's time for the feast, and you sit down around the table. The queen is at the head. You see that there is the uh, sub-chief who was with her before in the drill hall at one side of her. To the other side of her, you notice there is a very old man in robes. His eyes have gone a bit milky, and you can see his skin is somewhat scaly and sheddy. The subchief's name is not subreddit. It's something like ear toast. Ear toast. Ear toast. <laughs> but it's like an I-H-R-T-O-S, I think is how it's spelled. And you see, you see the, the older, the old lizard folk seated to uh, the queen's right. You hear him mentioned his name, he is the minister. His name is Sariv. And he's the one that the queen referred to earlier as being uh, a person she had to consult with who was really the champion of the diplomatic process. Um, his skin is, is scaly enough that, like, it almost looks like a goatee. There's, like, a little bit dangling off of his chin, but it's really just shedding skin. So that's a little bit, that's a little bit creepy at the dinner table, but he's, he looks upon, at, upon you with kind eyes and he's polite um do another uh persuasion check for everybody for everybody because y'all all are at the banquet at dinner let's see how you comport yourselves terribly bloody hell why can't i roll like this all the time Oh, God. You stop throwing food at people. Also around the dinner table, uh, you see uh, some fish folk. Uh, basically look like fish people, but they kind of have little uh, um, flipper feet and little short stubby legs. There's some of them oh, at the God, table. They do not have Kuotoa at this. Uh, no. Do a history check or a nature check. Na nature check is really what I want. So Chimere explains it for everybody who can't figure out what things are. And Chimere points at one group. Uh, the fishy looking people are Locantha. Uh, there's also some merfolk there. And of course there are the bullywugs and they have this problem playing kazoo at the table. There's a lot of uh, high hoeing going on um, that seems to bother some other people at the table. But otherwise it goes off pretty well. And you seem to comport yourself fairly well making friends with all sorts around the table. I'm adding up your renown right now. Okay. I'm just After... glad it's not Kuotoa. <laughs> it's not Kuotoa. After dinner, 
you're ushered into like a simple room that has a lot of pallets in it and you just see they're like pallet after pallet of all just lizard folk commoners just sleeping on the floor together there's at least 50 people in this particular room um, and those of you who need to sleep sleep those of you who need to meditate meditate all right we're part of this diplomatic mess aren't we i guess so and the next day, the next morning, before you even have a chance to check out the kitchen to see if they have fried squid and waffles or tasty bacon, you were summoned to the throne room for an audience with Queen Othakent. Hey, okay, we're supposed to be epic levels for audience with the queen. Meanwhile, I've lost the queen. Where is the queen? The queen is in another room. And Kareth Lana puts in chat, mass frog, and I'm going to point out, hey, that's racist. They're called bully wugs. As yesterday, when you enter the throne room, you see that there are still two little hatchlings playing on the floor. It's like they never leave this joint. Oh, the cute. And as you enter, they stop from like rolling the ball and playing jacks in the corner, and they look up at you, and you hear these little sounds like, "Ooh, they look important." Wait, are they saying we look important? Yes. That's totally the craziness you're hearing coming out of their little mouths. Low standards, I guess. Um, yeah, they do, actually. <laughs> and as you approach the throne... Queen Othakent says, I've received feedback from the people, from my advisors, about their impressions of you. And by and large, it's positive. But there's still a strong enough contingent within the commoners, and most of the shamans seem to continue to hold you in disrepute disrepute. I can think of one task, one predicament that you can assist the colony with that may decide things in your favor, specifically to the shamans who continue to argue against any kind of negotiations with Saltmarsh. And what would that be? Have you learned who Kaifoth is in your time among us? We have. Then you understand that our colony is called the Bloodroot Tribe for a reason. Uh, yes, one of your shamans explained it to us yesterday. Yes. Did he mention that there is a sacred ruin to the west that is called Mars Saval? Oh crap, did he? No, he didn't. Hi. No. <laughs> Wait, wasn't that where the... the... Well, he, he, he told us about the tree and the sap and its uses. But yeah, he, he just didn't mention so... the ruin. Or the name yeah, of I, it. I, then Kavi's just going to say, no, unfortunately, he did not mention that. The ruin lies upon the ch above the chosen lair of the dragon Kaifoth and her consort, Kairumag. They are magical creatures, of course, and they have bred a type of tree whose sap runs red. That is the blood root that you have heard speak of. The sap has magical properties, and the shamans use it in a ritual to bless our soldiers before a great battle. They say it makes their scales like stone. 
two scouting parties have been sent to Marseval to fetch sap from the bloodroot tree. Neither has returned. The shamans insist any action against the Sawagan without the ritual is cursed by Kai Voth. We must have the sap to prove them the fight has the goddess's blessing. The numbers of my soldiers are already stretched to the limit. I don't want to send more, but something must be done. So it occurs to me, what better way for the softies from Soft March to prove their competence? You will travel to Marseval, find what happened to my folk, and return with a vial of sap to make the, sh the shamans like you. If you do this, there is no way that they can reject a diplomatic envoy with Saltmarsh. Will you assist? Will we? Sure. Okay. Yes, Queen of the Cat, we will. Excellent. One more thing, a personal note. We do not often come into direct contact with the dragons, save for the royal line. I was servant to Kaifoth for several years and learned her wisdom as a girl. My spawn and heir, Bella Kent, sibling to those you see playing on the floor, is with them now for her royal apprenticeship. Given the worrisome departure, I mean, the worrisome disappearance, of my soldiers on an errand that should have been mild in danger. I am concerned. I would appreciate it if you can confirm her well-being. Without disturbing the dragons, of course. You definitely don't want Saltmarsh on their bad side. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say no one wants a dragon on their bad side. Like, period. Cracked ass enters the room, and he has a sea elf with him. Oh, oh God, no. no! We were doing so uh, well. Chafira goes and hides in the corner. <laughs> Mass face palm. But you look at him, and it's not Oceanus. <laughs> oh, thank the maker! It's another sea elf. But the sea elf approaches, and he's quite, he's full of pomp and circumstances, and he kind of brushes past you guys and makes a deep bow in front of the throne and says, Greetings, Queen Othakent. I am Fomir Sandcastle of Manon. I am ever so happy to have this meeting with you. And he kind of opens his, his arms wide. So he's this guy isn't Oceanus, but you can tell that he's like maybe just like a, a grain of sand less annoying than Oceanus. And as he has his arms wide, just coming up from his grand bow, you hear him make a little shrieking sound, like Eep! and his face pinches, and he's kind of like you see him clench. And he's kind of struggling with embarrassment, and you see the queen is very distracted, like, looking like, what is wrong with the sea elf? And suddenly, there's a, there's a smell of brimstone oh, imp. <laughs> around you, Chimere. Uh oh And a little imp poofs into, poofs into view on your shoulder. And it's giggling. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, what did you tell the imp to do if he found sh Oh, wet willy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I sure got him good! I'm gonna get a cheat! And he's squeaking a little bit loudly. <laughs> did you see what I did? I really got him this time! Oh, boy, oh, boy! And can we tell you, you said it's not Oceanus. Can we look and peer closely to see if there's any sort of, like, signs of disguised self? Yeah, you could do a, um, what, an insight? Is that insight or perception? Just one of... Do really think he would, though? I'm not going to roll, because I don't, I don't think Oceanus would even... I can't even imagine him doing that. Just... He's too full of himself to disguise himself as someone else. <laughs> 
Yeah, Carathon and Shafira, you guys, you're like, nah. I mean, this is annoying, annoying sea elf again, but it is not Oceanus. This is just another guy. It's probably something to do with this Manon place, and they're all like that. So you're making mental notes, let's not go to Manon, it's a very silly place. But meanwhile, like the imp is like flying around between uh, between Chimere and Steve and congratulating himself about how good he wet willied that sea elf. Well, it's the uh, wrong guy, but close enough, and I'll just hand him his bacon. Nope, nope. It was salt marsh fried squid and waffles. I promised him bacon. Was it? I thought I was probably from. Uh, you promised him oh, no, everything. Oh. You promised him bacon. You promised him fried squid and waffles I'll, and spicy I'll syrup. Give him the bacon. You give him the um, waffles and squid or what? He'll take anything. You just call. You say it's a treat, and he is so happy. And he's like, "I did good. I did good. Who do I give wet willies to next? Who do I give wet willies to?" Uh, for the time being, uh, we're gonna hold off on wet willies for the moment. Could be a rather delicate conversation. Okay, I will keep my wetness to myself. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> hey! Should I tell my boss about this? I, I, I stay with no on that one. You don't, you don't think you'd be curious about like the whole hanging out with the queen, eh? Uh, well, m maybe. Like, we'll, we'll tell him after, when, when we're okay. not, you know, in the middle of the conversation. Oh, well, like, if there was something else you wanted me to tell him, like, later, okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, I'll just be quiet right here. Thanks. I, I know, I'll make myself invisible again. Yeah, you do that. Okay, but I'm here. If you need me, just say you know what. Worst timing ever. So, it takes some social maneuvering for Queen Otha Kent to, like, kind of get the sea elf to back down and finish her conversation with you without him, like, being all up in it. So, she asks Crack Des to escort him to the temple. And give him, like, the tour, with quotation marks around the word tour. And then she finishes up the conversation with you. So when we get to, um, when we get to Marceval and, and get to the, the Bloodroot Tree, um, is there anything special we need to know about getting the sap? Like, do we have to do, like, a, a, a sacred spigot? like prayers so it doesn't kill us or you know or a special way of collecting it so we don't kill the tree yeah yeah you know, you know so we don't you know get killed is mm. the, the are, point. are you familiar with the concept of syrup yes you cook it and it turns into syrup have you ever collected syrup before is that what you're telling me you don't understand how to collect syrup no, we're just concerned because we never dealt with this tree before. We didn't know if it was any special conditions or it is any religious connotations. The same to... principle. Okay. Okay, just checking. I'm missing something. Do you have a spigot you can give us? I was going to give you an actual. The tree that we could typically collect the sap from should already be equipped with a spigot. Oh, that makes it super easy. I feel like I spelled something wrong. I'm Did putting. She tell us exactly where this tree was. Sorry. She gives you a vial of the appropriate size, so you know how much to get. Okay. And she asks you if you have a map. Oh, I guess we've got nothing. So yeah, you have the map. Like you have your nice map, and it just so happens to have the location of this ruin marked on it. 
it, it's put the, the label is placed much more cleanly than the scribbles that Oceanus did on your map to mark where the Bloodroot tribe's outpost was. So you see that Marsifal is to the west. The queen tells you that Oh, there it is. Flip that. But not online, yeah. <laughs> the queen tells you that if you travel by foot, it's going to take at least two days. And you're going to have to cross uh, an inlet, a small like uh, river inlet at one point to get there. Unless you go the completely the long way around and completely go over land, and that's going to take at least three days. Now, if you go by boat, she thinks uh, it'll be only about four hours before you you can you sail west along the coast and you'll reach the inlet and then it'll be another four hours hike on foot south to reach the ruin i like the boat route yeah that makes sense she says that when you reach the area uh, the ruins will be quite clear they're somewhat sunken but there is a shaft uh almost like a well or a, a stone chimney that uh, goes down for quite some ways. And there should be a bloodroot tree at the bottom of the shaft. So it's like underground? Oh, yes, it is an underground ruin. So how, big a, how big across is this shaft? Oh, maybe it's maybe 15 feet square. You'll have to consider how you will descend it. Normally, we just climb, but I don't believe softies are equipped with the same kind of hands. So we typically just climb down the sh sides of the shaft and then climb to the tree until we get to the base and take the sap and leave. We've got rope, haven't we? So... If you go deeper, which I do not advise, you will start and roach on the territory that is the dragon's lair proper. Oh. I wouldn't do that unless you encounter a problem. Okay, but you wanted us to check on your daughter? Where would that she is a be? good point. What I would do, you'll have to traverse the stairs. When you get to a stairwell that leads, it will lead down into almost a grove. You will see the chambers start to turn very green, as if the walls are made of jade. You will see a gong. If you ring this gong, it will bring the attention of the dragons, regrettably, but my daughter will investigate. As is her duty. She is, the, she is serving them now. And I think Carifalana's uh, questions are good as well. Well. So how far down is this, this chimney? Like... Uh, uh... I'm not quite sure what could have happened to the other scouting parties. I mean, traveling over land, it is always possible that one can run into different dangers. So it might be just a case that they fell upon some violent conflict. After all, the Sawagan are uh, having, they do have gangs scouting, patrolling the area between here and the far west. It could simply be that kind of violence. The ruin itself sometimes has various vermin and creatures that have uh, set up the, the ruins as home. And you might have to clean out an, an infestation now and then. 
The Sawakan could be found pretty much anywhere in the northern Basura Swamp at this point. You should be on your guard. Now, as for the chimney, I would say, oh, well, it could easily be a hundred feet down. I wouldn't try to jump unless you have wings. Do any of you have wings? I don't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We have rope, oh, don't we? Just hands and rope. I have 50 feet. I think I've got some of it. Same. 50. Or not. Accord yeah, according to our list, uh, yeah. Just Steve and Kymir have 50 feet of rope each. So you, I, mean, I, I have a hundred string. feet. String. You're going to lower yourself got, down on some string. I've got ten feet of string, so I could, like, twine that up until it's, like, one feet of string, so I could just add it to your rope. Okay. Do you have anything like crampons or whatever they call it that you hammer into the side of, like, rocks and stuff? We have some petons. I've got a crowbar. Would that work? <laughs> One of that's, us has got climbing gear. That's like a giant's climbing gear right there, a bunch of crowbars. <laughs> I'm sure Rich has got the climbing gear. No, I, don't, I haven't. The queen looks at your... as you're, you're, you're debating about this, and she's like, do you need rope? Yes. And I think we can provide you more. Yeah, when, when she says at least 100 feet, that doesn't mean exactly 100 feet, because then we're going to have to tie it off on something, and that's going to cost like six or eight feet right there. And, you know, then you go down, and we're going to have to knot the ropes together, too. So, like, you know, just two of them would, would still be like 10 feet short. Okay, I have a hammer and pitons. I'm reliably informed that those are climbing <laughs> gear. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Those so are. <laughs> Keep on pitting on. And I still have four left. I used six to nail up one of the smugglers' corpses oh, to the crate. Yeah. I still have four. I don't say that out loud in front of the queen, though. <laughs> and if you if you want it, there are another uh, two fifty feet uh, lengths of rope in the storage that, that would, she's willing to let you have, but she wants it back. That would definitely be, be uh, helpful, yes. Now, were there any parting gifts you wanted to give the queen beside the eggs and the food you've already um, given the, the group? I'm just... Were we going to give them the golden ribs and skull, or does that seem kind of Yeah, I mean, we mentioned gold now. if we needed to, but I'm not sure if there's any oh. point in... No. Yeah, no. I think it seems kind of messed okay. up right now. It would be awkward. Yeah. All right. I mean, who wants golden ribs, really? It just seems a bit weird, doesn't it, handing them out, saying, do you want a golden rib? I was going to put them up around my room. So, <laughs> you've gathered... You've gathered your ropes, you've gotten your instructions, you've gotten your map updated. Uh, do you have any more questions for the queen? What was what was the dragon's mate called again? Um, I want to say Kymerog. Oh, that's not why. Kyramog. K-Y apostrophe R-U-M-A-G. Okay. I was way off. Yeah, me too. I don't know what the hell I heard. I had Flopworth. See, this is why I think the YouTube subtitles are valid. <laughs> oh yeah, that's totally gonna great, you know, come across great on on the subtitles. Uh, so I that almost is... want to go well, watch another ep an old episode and see just what the subtitles come up with for everything that Bori shouts. Oh yeah. It's early in the day. You can set out right away if you want to. Might as well. It'll take you about four hours to get back 
to where you left the jolly boat, your um, elemental jolly boat with the two guards. And Judy and I think his, maybe it was Palti, I can't remember, the two, the two guards that were with the boat. They're still there. Uh, they've, they've had to kill off a few giant crabs, but they just had them for dinner. But otherwise, they say everything's been okay. And if you ask, they haven't spotted any Sawagan. Um, do you want them to come along with you? Well, uh, Constable yeah. Jute and Constable Green. Okay, Ju Ask Judy me. and Green. Well, wouldn't we need somebody to guard the boat when we get to where we go? Yeah, if you want them to guard the boat again, then yeah, they they'll I mean, they'll come along. Yeah, I mean, otherwise they're going to be stuck. Well, otherwise they're going to have to hike. There. They're going to hike to hike south. Mm. So we tell them they're coming with us. Ooh, I like what Carrie Flanner said. Okay, so you have a little talk with the imp. Does the imp have a name? I mean, you just keep referring to him as the imp. That's it's kind of... He says, I don't have a name because Boss says he doesn't need familiars so he doesn't grow attached because when the inevitable squishing happens. Whatever that's, that means. Uh, that's really, really dehumanizing. I mean, I... I'm I not think, human. I like Dave. Okay, then de empizing then. It's really like, funny. I'm not human. <laughs> Can I have a human name? Do you think I should have one? I like Tiny's suggestion. What about Dave? You want to call me Dave? Dave the Imp. I am Dave. human now. I'm humanized. Okay, I'm Dave. Dave the Imp. So here's here's what we're gonna do. If you want me to come and see you you can either say you know whose name three times or you can just say Dave three times I like that one better sure okay I will go back on a top secret mission to tell people what is going on so after I tell uh, you know who what's going on wait what should I tell him's going on Um, I guess tell him we've met with the lizard folk and we're doing them a favor to try and get on good relations. And then if you could tell the same thing to, please, Steph. You should. I should tell that to you know who. Oh yeah, we should totally mention that the Sahuagin are kind of marching on the city. That's kind oh, of yeah. sort of important. <laughs> Well, I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but you know who is kind of shady. Is there anyone else I should maybe tell stuff to? Just, just in case he keeps everything to himself, because I don't really trust him. Yeah, you should definitely tell Anders as well. <gasps> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if oh. you can get away with yeah. Well, I will totally tell him what's really going on. And then my boss, I will tell him that you are off being murdered. How's that sound? That sounds all right. Awesome! But yeah, if you could, if you could, do, uh, if you could do what Kerifalana said and also tell Anders that the Sawagon are um, causing trouble and that's why the lizard folk are getting weapons. It's nothing to do with Solmar. Alrighty, will do. You are a star, Dave. Thank you. I will tip Dave a tasty bacon. <gasps> Yum! I got a treat! And Dave poofs out of sight. So, you've made it back to the guards. You hop in the boat. You toot 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 your way along the coast. Well, wasn't Gellin, Gellin's whole thing was with, uh, what was it, House Civis, I want to say? Which I think was a completely different, completely different direction. Oh, did you, did you ask her anything about the slavers or the, the smugglers that she w dealt with? 
I, I think we kind of glossed over that because if we had dug in too deep, there was a very real, very, very real risk that we would have been executed. Like, oh, the slavers. <laughs> yeah, moving on. Um, oh, the slavers, not the smugglers. Well, the smugglers were slavers. The smugglers turned out to be slavers. Turned but out to be slavers, too. She did not give any indication in, in the way she described events that she knew they were slavers. It was more like two separate things. Like, there's this general idea that softies are not cool because there are some that engage in slavery. And then there's this whole deal where they were trying to get weapons because they had to, uh, they had to flee. And they were on, she indicated that they were on that ship to receive the weapons that they purchased from smugglers. But because it exploded, they didn't get their weapons. And it was uh, Garot, I think is his name was, the one that had seen Shafira and was swimming away from ship and then thankfully reported that we were not involved because we were in disguise the whole time yeah mm -hmm. and when you were clearing out the caves of the initial smugglers there was one guy who you um interrogated before you killed him that might have been ray bob who said that they had weapons there for the lizard folk right. so you and can then... kind of figure out that those weapons that are under your house uh, were, were the weapons that the Lizard Folk had purchased, and that on that night that you exploded the ship, those Lizard Folk were on the ship because they were going to row those weapons to the boat, and then the Lizard Folk were going to depart. Yeah, except they're not under our house anymore. I sort of kind of sold them to the Faithful Quartermasters. In the yeah. Weekend. But, you know, the so, queen doesn't know that you basically robbed her of weapons and you're responsible in any way for her being out almost 100 gold worth of dragon shards. But was it dragon shard or, dra or is it Chimere's dragon shard glitter? It was actual dragon shards that she traded, I oh. think. That means we have 100 gold worth of dragon shards somewhere on our property. <laughs> Not necessarily... It might have been in another castle. That's true. It could have been on the she boat. She paid that money to somebody. Some, her, one of her envoys paid that money at some point. Could have been on the boat. Could have been. To arrange this. Shuffled elsewhere. Anyway, as you approach uh, the point on your map, uh, there's kind of an inlet that seems to be the closest place on the coast to where the ruins are inland. And as you navigate the uh, elemental jolly boat southward into this inlet, yeah, where the arrow is pointing, you start to notice in the water that there are fish, dead fish, floating to the surface. And as the boat um, comes upon shore, you just see the beach is covered in dead fish and crabs and other sea life. I don't think that's... Don't strike me as normal. And this effect was a good half a mile out into this inlet uh, from shore. When we... we... When we say dead, like, how dead are, are they, like, picked clean? Are they, like, recently croaked? Uh, they are somewhat decayed. Uh, do a nature check if, if you want to do CSI on this. Or you can do medicine as well. Eh, well I'll, I'll do medicine. That's really if you want to CSI fish Why this. is medicine charisma? Oh, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't make anything sense. What? Did oh, they change medicine. something in the game? That's so, not right. That's Steve, not right. you're the only one yeah, who doesn't wisdom. really have a clue. No, it, 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 it got cycled on mine somehow. It is wisdom. I was going to say, so that doesn't make any sense. everybody, <laughs> Steve's like, well, what is with all these dead fish? And he's thinking about sushi, but he's not entirely sold on it because they do look a little funny. Uh, Chimera, Shafira, Kirithana, you're all like these fish. They, they are slight they're partially decayed you feel like uh they've 
been dead for a few weeks. Though it varies, like some of them are quite recently dead. You actually find a couple fish that seem to be gasping, um, like as they're, they are in the process of dying. And from what you can tell, you think that they're poisoned. Well, wouldn't they be gasping if anyway? Yeah, outside in the air as well. So not only are they suffocating to death, but you're pretty sure they're poisoned. So this is a Logan Paul video. That's messed up. So you leave Judy and Green with the Method Power Jolly Boat. Do you point out to them that the, the fish the fish are poisoned and they should be careful about the water? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure they can see him as well, so... You start to hike south. And... Oh, um, DM point, uh... Did, before we left, I mean, we're, we're backtracking a little bit here, um, but it's kind of important. Um, did we happen to, uh, hold on, I'm still scrolling. Uh, okay, there it is. Um, did we happen to turn in our, our weapons check coin with Kaifa stamped on it and get our stuff back? Did me oh, that. yes, yeah. you did. Okay, because that yeah. would be kind of important. You present the coin back at the at the pool where you turned in your weapons. And I think it was something like Vespa or something <laughs> was the name of the, of the lizard folk. Uh, they, you know, take the coin and give you back your stuff. No problem. Because, yeah, that would have sucked. As you head south, you uh, start to trudge through the marshy muck. You see that the, grass, the grasses here seem to be suffering as well. And they are wilted and turning somewhat brown. Okay, so uh, I guess we keep on marching towards the ruin? You hike south for another four hours. Everybody, uh, tell me about how you uh, travel. Marching behind Carith Lana. <laughs> Um, and uh, what is everybody wearing again? Specifically, I think Chimir and Carathlana. Carathlana, you have full armor on, right? And Steve, you kind of have like robes and stuff. Common clothes with the mariners underneath the mariners' leather armor. Are you keeping to the to the ground? Or are you walking through the marshy areas? Um, well, I guess it depends on what is. Oh, I mean, is it cover? Um, do we expect? Well, I suppose we do expect trouble since the other two are um, the other two groups have been killed. So you most definitely expect yeah. trouble. <clears throat> they're they're small little islands. Uh, little bits of land that are above the surface but the rest is like marshy water and there's patches of mud and like I said before you can see signs that all the vegetation is suffering on your trek south I would say we should probably stay out of the lot the marshy parts as much as we can like good old terra firma, the more firma, the less terra. There could be snakes and all manner of things in there. Oh yeah, not to mention the water's poison. 
Everybody do a survival check. That's it. Lost it now. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Both of us on brand. All right. Carathlana, you're golden. <laughs> I'm sharing a map with you. Wait, did I share the... I didn't share a map. I think I just shared hey, one of your... Okay, cool. So, Carathlana, you're golden as you are kind of hopping from island to island, marching, marching up towards these ruins that you can see. You have no trouble, Carathlana, uh, walking a path that you feel is, you know, the, 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 the most solid foothold. And you expertly navigate between the dodgy places and the dirt that you think might be quicksand. Everyone else, though, is really clumsy. And they manage to get in the water and, as a consequence, get a little bit soaky wet. So uh, the three of you who are not Carathlana, roll um, a constitution save. Well, at least we know we're in the right spot. I was doing so well. Chimer, uh, you are poisoned. You feel funny. Now everybody, uh, the three of you, Chimere, uh, Steve, and Shafir, make another survival check. Chimere and Steve, while you're in the water, uh, you doubly step wrong, and both of you fall into quicksand. And that is where we will leave off. Dying. Well, at least we're in the right spot. Since the map uh, labeled Mars of all entrance. Well, don't, Yay! Forget I rolled a, don't forget I rolled an 18, so... Yeah, Fira, yeah. You're, you're good now. You oh, managed right. to, like... <laughs> You escape poisoning. Your little constitution fights off, yeah. fights off the feeling, and you manage to crawl back onto the solid ground. Excellent. Help me! Help me! But Chimere and, and Steve are in a poisonous sinkhole. That's going to end well. Well, thank it's you, guys! Much. Thank you. Thank you. you. That was fun. Happy diplomacy. <laughs> so our next one is in two weeks, and then two weeks after that. Okay. Okay. You're gonna be uh, you're gonna be exploring Marsaval for stuff. Well, if I manage to get out of the quicksand, me and Steve. <laughs> if you, yeah, if you manage to get out of the quicksand, so maybe two of you will be exploring. Well, I have a crowbar. How are you gonna <laughs> help me get out of the quicksand? <laughs> yeah. All right. Good night, See guys. Bye, Bye, Steve. Don't die! Don't die! Don't die. Bye!